Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Taryn Wade and I'm an Associate Director in the European Corporate Research Team. Today I'm speaking with my colleague Paul Waters, who is Head of European Corporate Research. Welcome, Paul. Good morning. Uh, Paul, you've just completed the 2013 European Corporate Credit Outlook. What are the key messages um, from, from this piece of research? Yeah, well the key message is that actually 2013 is going to continue to be a pretty challenging year for corporates. Um, that's really driven by the macroeconomic outlook. Uh, we, we expect growth in Europe to be flat next year at 0%, and that's our base case uh, scenario which feeds into our forward-looking ratings. That's a 66% probability. Unfortunately, the balance of 33% is on the downside, a more severe uh, recession, which obviously would not be, uh, would not be great news for, for corporates. Now, that's reflected in the, the outlook distribution that we have for, for our, across our sectors. Two-thirds of our sectors are on stable to negative or negative outlooks. So that's up from about 40% in April 2011. So clearly, the fundamentals are going to rule the roost for 2013 in our view. Okay, and what about uh, sector specifics? Which, which sectors do we view most favorably and, and which are most negative? Sure. Um, at a sector level, there, there is, it's a mixed picture. Uh, on the positive side, well, perhaps on the negative side, let's start with that first. Mm -hmm. um, we, we see the greatest pressures coming through from some of the local, local sectors, which just continues the theme that we saw from last year. But, um, and that would include utilities um, and uh, leisure, for instance, um, in, in Europe. But we also see some of the more global sectors actually also um, more affected at the moment. Metals and mining is an obvious one. Um, steel is a structural problem, the steel industry in Europe. Uh, for the miners, obviously, they got hit with um, extreme volatility in the commodity markets in Q3. And although there's been some recovery, for instance, in some of the, some of the in industrial metals like uh, iron ore, uh, it, still, uh, it still puts quite a lot of pressure on cash flow for some of the, some of the miners to the extent they've got very, you know, very large committed capex programs going forward. On the more positive side at the sector level, there are some sectors which we still uh, have fairly stable outlooks on. Um, that would include you know, autos, chemicals, quite cyclical sectors. Autos may surprise some people, but really that's a tale of two cities there because you've got the, the sort of global uh, producers who are really um, the premium producers typically, um, you know, Daimler, BMW that sell to emerging markets um, where there's still quite strong conditions. But you've also got a significant weakness actually in the European car market where we're expecting sort of low digit sales volume falls next year. And given overcapacity in the European volume car market, that, that creates problems for companies like uh, Fiat, Renault, and uh, Peugeot. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about liquidity. It's been a really, really good year in terms of issuance of volumes for European corporates overall. By the end of the year, there will be over 200 billion euros in, in total issuance. And from the beginning of September, uh, a quarter of the issuance has actually been from peripheral peripheral-based um, companies, and, and they've had great access to the capital markets. How, how does this play into our outlook for next year? I mean, clearly for, for our rated corporates that by definition um, have, um, you know, have access to debt capital markets or, or, or have used debt capital markets over time to raise uh, their bond finance, you know, clearly to the extent that uh, they're able to refinance through issuing bonds, whether they're refinancing bank debt through the bond market, or whether they're just raising additional liquidity by, by issuing bonds, um, that's a positive from from a from a you know credit perspective. Looking at the, mm -hmm. the, the you know the, the links to financial risk profile, um, but of course you know that that sort of doesn't reflect what's really happening across the corporate sector, um, particularly for private companies, SMEs that that, that are still hamstrung with um, with you know with the problems with the banks ac across Europe, um, and it's also an issue still um, for some of our smaller. Uh, well, for some of the, the more vulnerable LBOs, which may, in the main are sort of 2006, 2008 legacy LBOs, where we still think that there could be um, refinancing problems going mm -hmm. forward. Okay, okay. And, and what about our default rate? Um, especially the, the last point that you mentioned, how does that affect how we view the default rate in 2013? Well, I think that's, that's, you know, that's an interesting key point. I mean, for us, we still overall expect the default rate to rise a little bit further in 2013. <laughs> The latest read we have was 6.3% uh, at the end of Q3 2012, and that comprises both the, the public high yield companies that we rate, but also the private uh, LBOs that, that where we provide the, the credit estimates, which, which essentially are, which go into or, or provide a assessment of default risk for leveraged loans that go into CLOs. And the, as I said, um, 
because of the, the sort of the, you know refinancing coming due in the next two years, there's about 68 billion of leveraged loans over the mm -hmm. next two years still, although mm -hmm. that's come down about 14, 15% in the last year, so there has been progress there. We still think that for the more vulnerable companies, that's B minus or below, they will still really struggle to, to refinance. And the reason is, is that although we're seeing a lot of momentum to extend transactions, which is where um, companies, um, th the lenders agree to, to sort of roll into uh, debt with longer maturity, uh, for the more vulnerable companies, where you have potential covenant issues, actually that's a much more difficult conversation because, because, uh, because it would typically require new equity from the shareholders, and that's a completely new investment decision. Um, and, and our view is that that will remain the exception rather than the rule, which basically means there's still a lot of, um, a lot of companies that really do need to restructure, in our view, over the next two years. Okay, okay, so some caution for 2013. Thanks for joining us. This concludes this edition of Credit Matters TV.